Shalom, shalom. Hey, first and foremost, I'd like to say, call Alalyam, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rukah Kadash. Devil honors to the apostles and the elders of the great millstone that taught us this truth. Shalom and salutations to the hopeful elect. I came out there spreading the gospel throughout the four corners of the earth in sincerity and truth and presenting their bodies as a living sacrifice as the scripture teach us to do. All right. Shalom I'm also to the very few sisters, the Aquaf, that do listen up as well. And the brother Yarmaya from the Great Millstone Chicago camp, basically coming back at you with another lesson. And this lesson is concerning um, the kingdom of heaven. And I was watching this kooky ass show on Netflix called The Good Life. You know, it's basically, you can watch it, man. There's so much to draw off there. And there's a little truth in it, too, you know. I like having the ninth episode, you know, the, the, the chicks chose up on Jake. You know, and that's that's gonna that's gonna happen a lot. You know, that's what the key. That's actually gonna happen in the kingdom of heaven. You know, because we're gonna have many women. But nevertheless, it's a kooky ass show, man. And uh, Esau is gonna be nothing like that, man. See, because what these 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 devils realize that don't realize is that it's not gonna be any loopholes out of this ass whooping, man, or out of the Israelites getting dominion. The scripture says in Sirach ten and eight, because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches gotten by deceit. The kingdom shall be translated from one people to another. All right, that's what's that's that's what's happening right now. The scripture says Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the the beginning of it that follow it. So I was just thinking, like, man, they they have no clue. The average person in the world has no clue what's going on, man. So I'm gonna just read this chapter, and this is what it's gonna be like, you know, <laughs> in the kingdom of heaven. This is a day in the life in the kingdom of heaven. It says, uh, this is Psalms 149 and 9. All right, this is King David. It says, rejoice in the king. This is Psalms 149, Salaki, 149 and verse 1. It says, praise ye Yahweh. Sing unto Yahweh a new song. And praise in his praise in the congregation of the saints, which are the Israelites. All right, and we're going to have, he says, sing a new, to the Lord a new song. Because we're going to have the laws, statutes, commandments. All right, in our head. And our hearts were not going to be able to go off. It says, Let Israel rejoice in him that made him, and let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. You see how that is? Their king. All right. Zion. Israel. He's not mentioning anybody else. And they had all these kooks up in there, man. All these other nations. All these heathens. You know. Conglomerating like they're going to be a part of. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> You know, and it was the afterlife, you know, it was it was what they would call heaven. And and, and and the scriptures don't say you die and go to this place or die and go to that place. The scripture says um, that the body shall return to the dust from which it came and the spirit will return to the most high who gave it for the edification on that. All right. It says for Yahweh take it pleasure in his people. He will beautify. Salaki, I skip three. Verse three, it says, let them praise his name and dance. And let them sing praises unto him. With the tremble in the heart. And I, like the great apostle Elder Tahar once said, you know this can't be talking about E. He can't sing or dance. All right? And those amongst them who look like them, th those are our people who, who have those talents. You know, like the the Justin Timberlakes and, uh, you know, Hall and Oates and so forth and so on. Like the apostle Elder Gabar say, that blue-eyed soul. You know, those are our people, man. And you could cut, cut it. Just cut it out, man. For you, how would take it pleasure... And his people, and he will beautify the mink with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the praises of Yahweh be in their heart and the two-edged sword in their hand. Why? Why would a sword be in their hand in the kingdom of heaven? It says to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people. Because the Israelites are going to have the, the right to do that. You nations are going to go into servitude. That's why I said they shall beat their swords in the uh, plowshares. And their spears and the pruning hooks. It says that in, uh, I think it's Micah. And also in Isaiah. About the second chapter. You can look it up. but Or post it on the comment board. But nevertheless, you could just Google those scriptures and say KJV at the end. Or word search. It's not a hard thing. You ain't doing shit anyway. <laughs> oh, man. This is, uh, it says, to bind their kings with chains and their fetters with iron. You see that? That's servitude. It says, to execute the judgment written, this honor have ye all his saints, praise ye the Lord. So this is what the elect are going to be doing in the kingdom. And he said, this honor have all the saints, 
praise ye the Lord. And this is the great King David. All right. A, a man who the scriptures say is after the Lord's own heart. All right. And the Lord lets you know himself. All right. Matter of fact, I'm trying to multitask. You know, I ain't got three hands, but um, I'm going to try to get this and hold this camera. Spirit be with me. Kai, Kai. Here, go right here. This is the Lord Yahweh Shai himself. It says, um, this is Revelations 2 and 25. It said, but that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him I will give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I, if, if, even as I received of my father. All right. And he said he's going to restore to us everything. All right. He's going to restore to us everything. He said a hundredfold. All right. He said in his father's house are many. Look that up. That's in the gospel. He said, um, I'm just paraphrasing that. But he said in his father's house are many mansions. If it weren't so, he wouldn't have said it. So we have a lot coming in the kingdom of heaven. But you you, you heathens, man. Hey, hey, you ain't for a rude awakening, man. You're not going to get a double kingdom, man. You ain't going to get a chance to rule here and there. All right, the Lord is going to show mercy to his elect, which happens to be the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And the one-third of them, which includes the 144, and the other, the two-thirds have to be brought back because he said a deliverance shall come from Zion and all Israel shall be saved. So they have to come back through our lineage, which means there will be plenty of S-E-X in the kingdom of heaven. Yes, for you boogie, boogie night knucklehead Christians out there. All right, but with that being said, Call aloud me, Howard Bashim, Howard Shai Bashim, Rakakadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of the great millstone and to the hopeful like I came out there and doing, all right, and pulling through. Hey, we got something great coming for us, and I sincerely believe that, and it's coming soon. Shalom.